So if you're not playing precision, even if you're opening, say, things like two clubs, good pairs will interfere with your two club opening if they can. Um, it's easier for them to come in over one club, a precision one club, um, without risking too much. Uh, so you will get disruption, certainly from good pairs. So you need to be prepared for it. OK, so all of those are different kinds of situation, especially where OCP is concerned. It really has to do with, um, initially, whether the interference comes immediately over the strong hand that's doing the asking, or immediately over the response to an asking bit of some sort. And that potentially applies just as much if you're not using OCP and you're, say, using Blackwood or a two-club opening. It depends if it comes immediately over the two-club opening or immediately over the Blackwood bid or if the interference comes over the response. Because, one, it's a matter of the response being adjusted because of the interference and in the other situation if there's potentially going to be some other kind of bid or a repeat ask um, you can uh, the asker has to adjust potentially what they're going to do because of the intervention and as I said right at the beginning a lot of this is to do with using pass and double rather than just leaving them undefined and probably never using them as actual bids. If you set your stall out, you can, you can use pass and double to actually so, show something specific which potentially is going to save you space later on. Just for example, Supposing you're using Blackwood rather than an asking bid, uh, a precision asking bid. Uh, supposing you're using Blackwood, it goes four no trumps, five diamonds, and then your right hand opponent um, comes in with five hearts. Maybe they've been bidding in hearts previously and they decide to sacrifice over five diamonds. Now you could play that pass means one thing in particular like maybe that's asking for kings double would be something else a lot of pairs don't don't put mechanisms like this in their system and lose out as a result because that can potentially save you considerable amounts of space sometimes even more space than if they hadn't made the interference in the first place OK, so we're going to start off looking at intervention immediately over a one club opening. And then also today we're going to look at actions by teller, in other words, the person who's ask, answering the questions, if there's interference immediately over the asking bid. And then next week we're going to look at actions by the strong hand if the interference uh, comes over the response to an asking bid. And lastly, the week over next, we're going to deal with uh, intervention immediately over the positive response to one club, which is subtly different because we aren't yet in an asking bid sequence. OK.
Okay, so we have covered, for those of you who've been following the OCP course, we have covered uh, um, interference immediately over the one club bid and what Responder does. Um, just to recap and, and go over it again in maybe a little bit more detail. Okay, so normally, if we get interference immediately over the one club, then normally one diamond would show 0 to 7 if there wasn't any interference. So now if there is some interference uh, at a relatively low level, then we use pass to show 0 to 4 points and double or redouble to show 5 to 7. And anything other than one of those two is a positive response showing 8+. plus. In OCP, uh, we tend to change that slightly if the interference is at the level of two hearts or two spades or above. Um, although each partnership, as I said there, decides where to draw the line, but the recommendation is two hearts. Um, now we use pass to show any naught to seven. And a double is, is becomes a positive bid. In other words, a double is game forcing, but it shows eight plus, but with no particularly good bid. It may be that you're balanced without a stop in their suit. Um, or maybe not, just you don't have a good bid. You may be 4441 or something, and you don't have a particularly good bid that you want to make. And you could just use a double just to show the points, make the sequence game forcing, but without actually showing anything in particular. And that sort of scenario actually carries on in the sense that if you, say, get uh, a sequence like one club and then interference of, say, three spades, now for a for responder to actually um, show a suit, they might want 10 or 11 or more. Um, and so with a relatively poor suit or nothing good, they would they would maybe double to show a positive double but without actually increasing the bidding still further and allowing opener to kick off asking sooner the drawback of that of course is that uh, we may miss out on a cheap fit in uh, responders suit if they haven't shown it but overall uh, we found that the the benefits outweigh the drawbacks of using a positive double over expensive interference. Any questions so far? Sanya, you, you have to decide. You know, at, at the one level, one no trump isn't guaranteeing a stop in their suit. If it goes one club, one heart, one no trump, it's just showing a balanced positive. Okay, so so there's no problem. If you're at the two level, it's more of a problem if it goes something like one club, two clubs, and you've got that kind of a hand without a club stop. But if it's if you've if you've only just got a positive, you can sort of devalue it to a five to seven double. Bearing in mind that, that there's no way the one club opener is going to pass a double and you can then bid more strongly later on. Don't be, don't be feeling that you absolutely have to show a positive if you've got, you know, say eight or nine points. But you don't have an easy way of showing your positive hand. Yeah, you know, if you've got a 12 count, then obviously you've got to do something. You can't mislead opener that much by by making a, a double instead of bidding one no trump. But don't worry too much about whether you have or haven't got a stopper in their suit if it's a matter of bidding one no trump or something else. If you're at the two level, then I would say a positive bid of two no trumps over two level interference is guaranteeing a stop because now we've got much less space to explore 
before we decide whether to bail out with three no trumps or play in something else. But after a positive of one no trump, there's plenty of space that we can explore whether we actually really do have their suit covered. So hopefully, Sanya, that covers that last uh, bit of text, covers what you were asking. OK. OK, so there's an instance where we love cheap doubles um, by ops. Uh, they give us loads of extra space. In that sort of a sequence, if we go as one club double, um, and maybe the double is just showing clubs, uh, if you've got a diamond positive, we've actually gained an entire level of, an, an entire round of bidding by being able to show a diamond positive at the one level rather than the two level. Okay, I'm not going to go over 4 4 for one hands. Uh, we had a specific session on them. Um, and we covered fairly well what we do over interference if you've got that positive 4441. Um, if you just have a look back at the YouTube video, if you missed that uh, particular lesson, or have a look on the website, it's all fairly well detailed there. But I'm not going to go over that in, in more detail today. So I'm not going to tell you, you know, if, if you're not using OCP, I'm not going to tell you how you should play those sorts of sequences, but it's worth having some kind of agreement about what a pass and what double means, rather than just leaving it vague and undefined and common sense. Um, you know, you could play that definitely a pass is waiting and maybe a double is showing... Um, you know, a negative even, giving opener a chance maybe even to pass that for penalties if they have uh, if they fancy it and the vulnerability is right and so on. All I'm saying is discuss it with your partner and rather than leaving it undefined, actually assign uh, some specific meaning to pass and double. Um, you know, you may want double to show any positive, for example, um, and pass to show a hand that would otherwise have just bid a two diamond negative over two clubs. So hopefully uh, most of that was uh, ground that you guys were already aware of. Um, if there are any questions, then fire away. But I don't want to spend too much time on that. Okay, let's press on. Okay, uh, for those of you who aren't into OCP, OCP asking bids use stepped responses. In other words, if, if two hearts was an asking bid, then two spades would be the one step response two no trumps would be the two-step response, and so on. And there are very specific meanings assigned to 
each of those step responses. So the way, much like if you're playing Blackwood, four no trumps is the ask, five clubs show something and specifically five diamonds show something else, five hearts show something else again, and so on, depending on what version of Blackwood you're playing. Much the same idea, okay? Um, but, but OCP does take it many levels above what uh, Blackwood does. So D1P2 simply stands for double being the one-step response and pass being the two-step response. That's basically what we're talking about, okay? Um, and, and so we aim to reclaim some of the space that we've lost because of the interference. And in the case of redouble, R1P2, we're actually gaining space that we wouldn't have otherwise had because double and pass take care of the one and two step response so an actual one step bid would actually be the three level the three step response that's the idea okay so uh, Blackwood uses a very simple a lot of people use Blackwood. If there is interference, uh, they use something similar. Um, Doppy and Roppy is, is probably the commonest acronym um, for double showing no aces and uh, pass showing one, or maybe double showing naught or two and do and um, pass showing one or three, for example. Um, other people use uh, dope and rope, where double would show an odd number of aces or key cards, and pass would show an even number. Um, so Doppy and Roppy is, is similar in, in idea to D1P2. Dope and rope isn't. It's It's Dope and rope are cheaper, as I've said there, because you're never actually bidding anything. You're either showing an odd number or an even number, but that is at the expense of, of actually being ambiguous. And uh, I have seen auctions go drastically wrong um, where dope and rope have been used because partners got the wrong end of the stick and say signed off or bid the slam and actually partners got no aces rather than two aces or vice versa And this may seem trivial, but, but, you know, even saving one space can actually have a dramatic effect on an asking bid sequence. It can potentially, that one space saved in the response can actually save you an entire round of bidding later on. Because it means that uh, asker can actually make another ask cheaply that would otherwise have actually been quite expensive. So it can have quite a dramatic effect. Asking bids is all about trying to conserve as much space as possible so that you can get as many asks in as possible so that uh, the strong hand that's doing the asking has the maximum amount of information before they decide where the contract should be played. So as I said before, we love doubles because they always gain us space. Um, in case you were wondering why 
double is the cheapest option and pass is showing the two-step response this is why we always use double or redouble as being the least attractive the way the asking bids responses generally work is that the one-step response is the least favorable response so we use double or redouble to cover that and pass to show the two-step response simply because over the pass opener has to do something whereas over the double if they decide that actually that isn't good enough they may have the option of passing that double for penalties rather than bidding on so that's why okay so we don't always have both double or redouble and pass as an option okay so for example uh, next week we'll see that sometimes pass by the strong hand can actually be an asking bit so if they've passed if they if, if the strong hands right hand opponent has interfered in some way and the strong hand passes to make a particular asking bid now if it goes interference pass pass then clearly pass isn't an option for the the hand that's answering the questions because the strong hands pass was an asking bid so they have to bid something so in that case only double is available as a space saving measure similarly if the strong hand has doubled or redoubled to make an asking bid then double or redouble in turn isn't available to the hand that's answering as a space saving measure because they've got to bid something and they can't pass because then now effectively it's treating the double as penalties so if the strong hand that's doing the asking has doubled or redoubled we never get any space saving done we've already achieved it hopefully with the double or redouble but now a teller has to actually bid something okay so so here's an example we've had uh, we've had a one heart positive response um, opener one club opener has bid two diamonds as an asking bid in diamonds asking about uh, responders support for diamonds and then we've had a two spade over call so now it's responder who's turn it is to bid so the double shows the one step response to the two diamond alpha ask so that would show no support for diamonds and naught to three controls pass would show no support for diamonds and four or more controls in other words the two step response and now two no trumps which is the actual one step bid is actually the three-step response which shows diamond support and naught to three controls and so on and so on and so on so if the asking bid was alpha and we then get some interference um, double and pass take care of all of the negative responses and if responder actually bids something then we know we've got a diamond fit okay so 
as we'll see in uh, a couple of weeks' time, um, if it goes one club, no bid, one heart, positive response in hearts, and now we say you get a one spade over call. If opener passes, this is asking about responders' hearts, uh, and that comes in uh, interference over a positive response to one club in a couple of weeks' time. But now we've got a situation where pass was the asking bid, so now, pass by responder isn't an option, but double would be the one-step response showing no top honor in hearts. The one-step response would actually be the two-step response. So one no trump would be the two-step response showing a five-card heart suit with one top honor and so on and so on. Okay, any questions so far about um, how Responder deals with interference over an asking bid? Anybody not sure what I've explained here? Okay. Let's just give you an example uh, hand here. So we'll have some interference of one spade. South's got a reasonable hand. They've got a positive response in hearts. So they're going to bid two hearts. Okay, so here, um, North has got a heart fit, so they're definitely wanting to uh, find out about hearts. So here they would pass, which would be so now here, double by South would be showing no top honor in hearts. So that would be the one step response, but South's got five to one top honor. So that would be the two step response. So they actually just bid two no trumps because it's common ground between North and South that double would be showing uh, the one-step response, and so two no trumps is actually showing the two-step response, so five to a top honor in hearts. Okay, so here we had three clubs was an asking bid. That was asking about how many controls South has in their hand. And we've had another interference of three spades by East. So now double would be showing naught to two controls. And pass is showing three controls exactly, which means an ace and a king or three kings. So hopefully you can already see how we're using D1P2 to save us some space. So now what else are we going to do? Um, North here um, could actually double, and that would be, as we'll find out next week, double here would be a repeat gamma in hearts, because we use, we use D1P2 effectively by the strong hand as well, 
but to ask in suits below that of the interference. So the suit below hearts, sorry, the suit below spades is hearts. So double is an asking bid in the suit below the interference. Um, in other words, an asking bid in hearts. And the next asking bid in hearts would be asking South to clarify which top honour he had in hearts. Obviously, North doesn't need to do that because there is only one missing top honour. So he knows that South has five to the king in hearts already. We also know that... Uh, um, if, if South has the King of Hearts, they must have an Ace somewhere as well. So they've either got the Ace of Spades, which isn't much use to us, or they've got the Ace of Diamonds. And uh, so, because Pass by South was the answer to an asking bid, then clearly pass isn't available to north as an asking bid either. So if north wants to find out uh, find out whether south has the ace of diamonds or not, um, they have to actually bid four diamonds. Um, say for the sake of example, we now get a bid of four spades by a fairly suicidal north. Um, not that suicidal, but uh, at this vulnerability, it's fairly suicidal. But now again, double by south would be showing no control or first and second round control of diamonds, which they obviously don't have. Pass would show third round control Four no trumps would show second round control. Five clubs. Sorry. Uh, I'll pass. Five clubs would show second and third round control. Five diamonds would show first round control. And five hearts. is showing first and third round control. And if you actually know what the responses to four diamonds would be normally, you can see that actually D1 and P2 have reclaimed all of the space that we've lost because of the four spade overcall. Because without the four spade overcall, South would have responded five hearts anyway to show first and third round control. So we've managed to eliminate the space that we've lost by using D1, P2. So now North knows that South's got Ace X exactly in uh, diamonds. Uh, we know the hearts are pretty much solid. And we know that the diamonds are going to take care of any uh, losing clubs that we might have in the south hand. Okay. Um, okay, any questions about the use of D1P2 in that hand? Excellent. Okay. Excuse me a second. Sorry. Uh, okay, just when you thought you now know everything there was to know about interference over an asking bid, uh, it gets a little bit more complicated. Okay, let me say 
at the outset that OCP's current definition of preemptive interference is if it jumps to it jumps at least one round of bidding to a level at or above three no trumps. However, that definition of preemptive interference is being reconsidered as we speak. There's been a conversation already in the OCP forums about this. Uh, and uh, John Lute and I, uh, some months ago, thrashed out uh, what we think is a, a reasonably good substitute for the current definition. The problem with the current definition of preemptive interference is that you can somehow, you can sometimes get interference that costs you a lot of bidding space, but actually doesn't involve any jump bids. And so our current definition wouldn't class it as preemptive interference, but actually there are times when we want to. Uh, similarly, it may be that the jump was um, not immediately over the asking bid. It might have been just before the asking bid. We've still potentially uh, lost a lot of bidding space because of that jump. But if, if we don't get... Um, a jump interference over the asking bid, then that current definition wouldn't kick in as it being preemptive interference. So we are reconsidering all of that. Um, uh, but at the moment, the, the system definition is as it is, because uh, we've still got a few things to thrash out before we actually republish what's in the system. Okay, if we get preemptive interference over an asking bid, or as it will be eventually, if the definition of the change definition of preemptive interference has been satisfied, then the following thing kicks in. And basically, it's a different set of ranges depending on what the asking bid was. So those of you who don't play OCP can uh, switch off for a couple of minutes because I'm actually going to run through the different ranges for each of the asking bids. But you might want to consider that, you know, if you're, say, using Blackwood and you get some interference over Blackwood, that you might want to somehow shorten your responses to Blackwood if there's some interference over the Blackwood ask. Or Gerber, if you're using Gerber, but uh, there's not much hope for you if you're using Gerber. Okay, so as you can see, we've shortened. If, if we have preemptive, in, preemptive interference um, over the asking bid, as it stands at the moment, then now double shows any hand that doesn't have support for opener's suit. Pass shows support, but with 0 to 3 controls, and so on. And uh, you can see that we've drastically shortened the alpha range. Uh, and that's basically what we do with most of the ranges. Some of the ranges, however, don't get changed at all. One of them is beta. Essentially, beta or zeta are unaffected because the precision is essential. Uh, we can't really shorten beta or zeta, which are both asking about how many controls partner has. So those ranges don't get shortened at all. Um, over gamma, 
we we ignore now um, openers. Sorry, partners' length in the suit in their suit. We just show basically the number of top honors. So a double would show no, no top honors or only one top honor. Pass shows two top honors, and one step shows all three top honors. And as you'll see as we go through these asking bids, the idea is that most of the time we manage to keep the responses to uh, one or two theoretical steps or possibly no actual steps. In other words, double and pass take care of some of the options or most of the options. And actually, an actual bid over the preemptive interference um, is quite rare. Okay, so delta, theta, and iota are um, three asking bids with very, very similar responses. And now, um, double would show a hand with less than three to our top honor or four small, which is the level at which we start agreeing the suit. And pass would show three to a top honor or four small or better. In other words, agrees the suit. Epsilon. Uh, epsilon is a bid that uh, asks about specific degree of controls in a side suit once we've agreed trumps. Um, so now we show double would show no control or only third round control. In other words, three small or um, maybe uh, queen X or three to the queen or a doubleton. So third round control of the suit. Pass would show second round control, um, maybe even with third round control as well. And one actual step would show first round control of the suit, maybe with second or third round control as well. So we abandon uh, some degrees of precision just to keep the bidding very simple and cheap. Okay, so eta is a little bit like gamma, uh, which we've already covered. Um, slightly different, um, because eta is always in a four-card suit, and it's very rare that the eta responder will have all three top honors. Um, so double shows no top honors or only one top honor, and pass shows two or three top honors, but for most purposes it shows two. Okay, Sigma we covered uh, only a couple of only a couple of weeks ago. Um, sigma is after a positive response to Alpha. So now Double would show no top honor. Pass shows one top honors, and uh, one actual step would show two top honors. Um, sigma is an asking bid that asks how good. Uh, Teller's support for openers suit is, even though they've made a positive response to it already. Okay, so for, for the most part, with preemptive interference, uh, we condense the uh, responses to the various asking bids, as I've shown. You can get all of those. You can see all of those listed on the website. Uh, it will, may take you a while to remember them. Um, but uh, <coughs> the thing to remember is that beta and zeta, the ones asking about the level of controls, are unaffected, but all of the other ones are.
So that's actually likely to be fairly soon. Uh, I'm trying to encourage uh, the other sort of senior OCP users um, to finalize those discussions over the next few weeks. And uh, uh, the definition on the website will change but there will be some publicity in the OCP forum. So if you are an OCP user, please keep an eye on them and hopefully contribute to the discussions before the final decision is actually made to go ahead with uh, what John and I thrashed out a few months ago. Okay, any questions about preemptive interference? And how we deal with it. Let me just give you uh, an example of some preemptive interference. Just bear with me a second. Actually, preemptive interference over an asking bid is relatively rare. Very often the preemptive interference comes either immediately over the one club opening or immediately over the positive response to one, uh, one club. Um, not always. I'm not actually sure if I've got... Just trying to find, just bear with me, I'm just trying to find a hand to see if I've got an example hand with some uh, preemptive interference um, over an actual asking bid. I'm actually not sure I do. I do apologize. I'll see if I can't uh, manufacture one a bit later on um, as we go through these hands. Okay, I'm just going to give you a couple of hands. These are actual hands that Jason Hackett and I played. Uh, the first one is one of my favorite hands of all time. Uh, for OCP um, and this will really give you an idea of of how uh, the way that OCP deals with interference works in practice and how we actually uh, very often gain bidding space ultimately if you look at this hand, this hand was a hand that Jason and I played in a pairs congress at uh, Eastbourne. Um, quite a very large pairs event. Um, and uh, out of the whole room, I think uh, there were only um, about three pairs got to six diamonds here. Um, but... Uh, Anyway, this is how the bidding went. Bear in mind, back in those days, by the way, um, Jason and I were playing a redouble here as four to seven, and a pass here would have been naught to three. Uh, after this, not because of this hand, but subsequently we uh, amended that definition so that pass was naught to four, and double or redouble was five to seven. Um, but that just explains why East is redoubling here.
so here one diamond would have been just natural uh, showing diamonds but two diamonds is an asking bid called Delta that I mentioned before um, and it's the only way that uh, opener can force an asking bid response an asking bid sequence after a negative response and the redouble from ace is is a negative response even though it's showing four to seven um And it's worth noting that, that the, the cheap double, and I did say we love cheap doubles, without the cheap double, this bidding would have gone one club, one diamond from east, and now to make that delta ask, west would have to have bid three diamonds. So that, that double by north has actually saved us an, an entire round of bidding already. Um, okay, so here two spades is, is showing... A singleton top honor or too small in diamonds. Three diamonds is a repeat delta in the same suit. So it's asking whether East has a singleton top honor, in other words, a singleton queen, or um, too small. And this was this is one of the crucial bits where OCP gains on this hand because nobody else uh, hardly in the room was able to find out about the stiff queen of diamonds in the east hand Okay, so three hearts here showed the singleton top honor. Three spades would have shown too small. Um, this this was long before relay beta came on the scene. Um, so here, four clubs would have been asking about how many controls uh, East had. Um, because the three diamond bidders set diamonds as trumps. Uh, these days, three spades would, have mean, would mean something different. Three spades would be asking how many controls East had in their hand. Um, but back in those days, we didn't have relay beta. So here, three spades was epsilon. Um, Okay, I mentioned before about uh, using D1P2 over the response to an asking bid. That's something that we're looking at next week. Um, so here, the redouble by West was asking about the suit below clubs. And the suit below clubs is spades, if you imagine it going around in a wheel. Um, so this is a repeat epsilon in spades asking what kind of third round control East has in spades um, because uh, makes a big difference whether they've got too small or whether they've got three to the queen or queen x in spades um, given that east has only a singleton trump albeit the singleton queen we uh, uh, we can't be sure of a rough if ops lead trumps so there is a big difference 
so we can't save anything over this redouble because East has to actually bid something. Um, and with OCP, the three-step response is showing both an honor and shortage. In other words, exactly Queen X. It's third round control because we've got the Queen. And it's third round control because we've only got two of them. And we can rough the third round. So the fourth spade response shows exactly Queen X in spades. And like I said, out of uh, the whole field, there were loads of people in five diamonds. Um, very, very few got to six because West just didn't have the method the methods to uh, to find out exactly what East had and finding out about Queen X of Diamonds and the Stiff Queen of uh, sorry Queen X of Spades and the Stiff Queen of Diamonds was just beyond most people but it's worth noting that even OCP would have struggled to find out without this interference if you're going to interfere against precision especially against OCP don't do it with cheat doubles because we love them we thrive on them it, in total uh, these those two doubles saved us two entire rounds of bidding space um, where are we Just another quick example here. Anybody got any questions about that hand, by the way, about uh, the use of D1P2 by East? Um, actually, thinking about it, we don't actually have D1P2 uh, by the weak hand there. Um, but I think there is some in the next hand. So this was another hand that uh, um, Jason and I played. I can't actually remember the circumstances. I think it was a, a teams match, this one. Um, just in a league ma Manchester League match. I think uh, Two Hearts by South was just an out-and-out -out psych, uh, or an attempt at a psych, um, because actually, of course, South likes spades. But I think they were just trying to muddy the waters on the basis that uh, East-West might have a heart fit. In fact, we didn't, but there you go. Um, Again, Jason and I had different arrangements uh, over a positive response with interference over a positive response to one club back in those days. Um, and uh, and back in those days here, uh, Double was asking in diamonds um, but uh, it wouldn't be that now. These days, West would pass to ask in diamonds rather than doubling, uh, but we completely revamped them a few years ago. Um, uh, 
Right, so where did it go from here? Um, so again, no space saving measures over the double. Uh, actually, no, hang on. No, I'm sorry. I've told you wrong. Sorry, the double was asking about controls. Not asking about diamonds. So double was beta, not not gamma. Back in those days. Uh, I only say that because the response was two spades. Which is showing naught to two controls. So again, if you cast your mind back to what I said before, here double would be, uh, here we've had some interference over the response to an asking bid. So now redouble would be asking about hearts and uh, pass was asking about East's diamonds. Um, So here, redouble uh, is the one-step response, um, showing no top honours in diamonds. Two no trumps showed one top honour with only five card suit, and three clubs uh, showed two top honours with a five card suit. Two or three top honours with a five card diamond suit. And of course, West knows which one of those it is. Uh, back in those days, we didn't have uh, relay beta at all. Um, so here, uh, I think West bid um, three hearts, asking about heart controls. Um, just bear me a second. So again, D1, P2, if you bear in mind, double would be showing no control of hearts or first and second round control. And pass is the two-step response and so showing third round control. So beta is still in the mix here. Um, back in those days, we had to uh, um, had to bid. Um, Four diamonds is a high level beta. We didn't have relay beta available. Uh, just bear me a second. Um, So 
So this is beta. This was beta in the weak scale. Four node trump shows exactly two controls. Uh, So now, uh, the worry for West was uh, the spade controls, but they hadn't, didn't have any, initially, any uh, easy way of finding out. But now they could. Um, potentially by bidding five spades, but of course, any response uh, was going to push them to uh, um, six diamonds anyway. And uh, with all the bidding in spades, West decided that East was probably short in the suit um, and bid six diamonds anyway, which turned out to be right. Not certain with... Uh, different partners maybe that we would get to six diamonds here um, but hopefully it's given an explanation or, or an example of how D1P2 by teller actually works anybody got any questions Okay, so there's a couple of hands actually from live play. Um, if nobody's got any questions, um, and there's no questions about anything that we've covered today, I will stand. And uh, can I have four victims, please? And I've got a few more hands that you can practice on. Don't all shout at once. Come on, guys, don't be shy. Come on, stop waiting for everybody else to sit. I don't care whether you are an OCP expert or a newbie. If you've, if you've followed the lesson and... Uh, you're reasonably in tune with the asking bids, then you can uh, please by all means sit and try your hand at what we've covered today. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Esther. Two more, please. Why is it such a struggle to get you lot to sit? Thank you, Roger. <laughs> your flimsy ex yeah Octay, ask away if you're not prepared to sit I'm not guaranteeing to answer but uh... <laughs> come on guys let's have a north please somebody sit we waste so much time Okay, um, one club, one spade over call, two diamonds, positive response, two hearts, 
these days, yes. Pass would be Gamma in Diamonds, and Double would be Alpha in Clubs. You're quite right. Back then, uh, we had a really complicated scheme of responses to interference over a positive response to one club. I'm not even going to begin to explain. It was an enormous chart that was a real problem to remember. And it wasn't consistent. And we just we just cobbled it together. Um, but eventually, we uh, after Relay Gamma came along, uh, sorry, Relay Beta came along, we decided that incorporating low-level gammas, low-level betas, into the scheme over a positive response to one club was really a waste of time and to concentrate totally on Trump agreement. And we vastly simplified the arrangements, as you're going to find out in two weeks' time. Okay, but these days, you're right, Octay. Um, pass, if... if responder has, has made a, a positive response in a suit and there's interference over the positive response pass is always gamma in their suit and double is an asking bid in the bid below that of the interference can i please have a north if nobody's going to sit north i'm going to bed <laughs> come on guys We've wasted nearly 10 minutes now. Will somebody please sit north? I, there's no point in me sitting north. I don't need to practice the system. I can see all 52 cards and I wrote the hands in the first place. Please, could somebody sit north? <coughs> Gordon Bennett. Please, can somebody who is hearing what I'm saying sit north? Thank you, Sanya. If you fall asleep, I'll give you a nudge. You're a star. Right. Okay, try and cut your teeth on this one, guys. So north-south, please feel free to interfere here. We've sometimes restricted the amount of interference. Um, I was thinking more in terms like two clubs, Michael, if you wouldn't mind. It doesn't have to be preemptive interference. I think at this vulnerability, I think you'd be unlikely to bid three clubs. You might do. If you were an OCP user, you might well bid three clubs, but uh, for the purposes of this lesson, let's keep it reasonably sensible. I think Roger's fallen asleep. Roger, are you with us? No, He's with the Woolwich. Feel free to bid something. No, feel free to bid something. Oh, right, okay, I'll uh, just hang on a minute. I'll load them. Yeah, well, I'm cruel like that. Bear in mind that once we get all this interference, uh, a lot of FD goes out the window. But uh, they are loaded for what it's worth.
Sanya, um, why not try bidding something to muddy the waters a little bit? Like, say, two spades. Bid two spades. An out-and-out -out psych. Maybe. Exactly. If you wish to get your cat to sit north, Sanya, please feel free. OK, so here, double, as we'll find out next week. Uh, sorry, the week after next, rather. Um, double would be alpha in hearts. And now we've got a three spade bid from south. So double is asking in hearts. It's an alpha ask. And and just if you just bear with me a second, Roger, this is actually uh, where the changing definition to preemptive interference would kick in, if and when we adopted it. Probably we would treat this as preemptive interference here, the three spade bit. So if and when that changes, we might now switch to the contracted. Uh, responses but at the moment we aren't okay carry on Roger when you're ready Roger is thinking hard about this uh Actually, double, Roger. Not to three controls, no heart support. Thank you, sir. Double, double, sorry, double here shows the one step response so no support for hearts and not to three controls and pass would show no heart support but four or more controls redouble we love redoubles so now uh, east could pass to ask again in uh, in hearts that would be theta in hearts if they wanted but actually I think East would actually agree diamonds at this point because we know East knows that West doesn't have four small hearts they might have three small but I think they'd be more likely to go for the diamond fit. No space saving measures for that because of the redouble. So East has to bid four diamonds. And hopefully you can see at this stage how we're keeping the asking bid going despite some fairly determined interference by North South. Um, So four diamonds is gamma in diamonds, asking how good uh, West's diamonds are. And Roger is about to bid. Um, no, actually, Roger, uh, five diamonds would be six card diamonds with two top honours. Five clubs is six card diamonds with one top on it. That's a clue. 
by the way. So no space saving measures here. So four hearts, four spades and four no trumps takes care of no top honours and the five card suits and five clubs is one top honour with a six card suit. So now five hearts would be relay beta. Hint, hint, hint. So now we're on the weak we're on the weak beta scale because of the uh, double over three spades which showed naught to three controls. Oh well that's a shame. I thought we might get a five spade bid from uh, South. Uh, five hearts, five spades, five no trumps, six clubs, six diamonds. Impressive. Three controls. So we know that West has got uh, six diamonds to the ace. And we know they've got one of the black kings. Now, bearing in mind... It's Esther. I knew she was going to pass. Okay. I would like Roger, please, uh, to play this. And I'd like Roger to make 13 tricks in diamonds. So, in fact, imagine you, you were in seven diamonds rather than six diamonds, Roger. <laughs> I only say this, Roger, because it's a nice hand this for play. If you think about the bidding, you will find maybe the right answer to the play on this hand. Playing the Ace of Clubs, good decision. Okay, I want you to think carefully about what the bidding and the early play to this hand is telling you hopefully Sanya he'll do more than that Oh, very nice, Roger. I do like the Eight of Diamonds. Outstanding. Not make any difference, but outstanding. I love a man who gives himself an extra option. 
Okay, so two two diamonds. What are your thoughts so far, Roger? I'm just you need to find out don't you this is all about you you know what just think back Roger to the bidding and the opening lead okay you don't have to make any hard and fast decisions yet you've drawn trumps the opening lead was the seven of clubs and south bid two clubs the seven does not look like a lead from three to a top honor does it and at this vulnerability the two club bid was probably showing something like king queen jack to six The opening lead looked more like a doubleton than anything else. The diamonds are 2-2. Two, two. All you need is two tricks from the heart suit to get rid of your club losers. Yes? You know there's no losers in spades. So why not test the hearts? Well, the ace, king, queen of hearts is going to get rid of one club loser. So if the hearts are 4-2... You haven't got a problem here. Because you can rough the hearts good and you then have a long heart to get rid of the second club loser. That's absolutely right, Roger. Yes. So why don't we give the hearts a try? Go on, mate. I'll say nothing else. Oops. You didn't think it was going to be that simple, did you, Roger? South played a club, Roger, on the second heart. All right, he played the two of clubs.
just take my word for it, Roger. South South played the uh, Michael played the tour clubs on the King of Hearts. Oh, right. Okay. Um, no, you haven't. This must be an extension of the well-known bug to do with undoes, I suspect. Any good, Roger? Yeah. It normally affects the bidding box. But uh, maybe the undoes in the play affect the uh, the cards played. How you doing, Roger? Roger, I'll tell you what, just stand a minute. Okay, I'll just finish playing the hand, Roger, and I'll, and I'll explain it as we go. Okay. Um, okay, so the whole point about this hand is, is trying to get the 13th trick. Okay, we've played two top hearts, and it's we now know that South started with a singleton heart, and that North started with five of them to the Jack Ten. So there's absolutely no chance of uh, being able to establish a fourth hard trick here by normal means. But as usual with squeeze positions, we want to tighten up the position a bit. Feel free to play a card, Michael. Uh, it is. I've led the Queen of Hearts from Dummy. Okay, tell you what. Okay, just just uh, do this again. I won't, we won't go through all the bidding again. Absolutely right, Roger. Okay, so the whole point about this is imagine the two club bid here. The seven looks like a doubleton here. I can see it might be from three small, but it doesn't look like from three to a top honour. I suppose it could be potentially but it doesn't look like it it doesn't sound like it so again if the hearts are 4-2 we don't have a problem 
but we'll start off uh... why did I like the eight of diamonds because it gives you an extra entry to dummy potentially that's why I was complimenting Roger before just in case you were wondering when the diamond split 2-2 two, two. so now we test the hearts south shows out damnation so now we tighten up the position a bit By, by this point, I'm absolutely certain that South starts off with King, Queen, Jack to six or seven clubs. Now I know it's to six because uh, unless there's some very expert false carding going on, South has discarded three clubs and the King and Queen are still missing. And it looks like North led the seven from the seven and the four. So I know that my ten of clubs is a threat against south. And I know that the nine of hearts is a threat against north's jack. So now all we do is just play off another round of diamonds. Shut the club. And now we have a sort of classic, classic four card ending for a double squeeze. North has to let go of spade to keep the jack of hearts. So now I can chuck the nine of hearts from dummy. And now in turn south is squeezed because they have to chuck a spade in order to keep the king of clubs. It is nice. Double squeezes are really nice. They're really satisfying in situations like that. But the thing is, you need to keep an eye out for them and not give up too easily. Um, you know, have a think about leads and, and the bidding. Here, the two club bid from south and the lead of the seven makes it a pretty good bet that South started with the King Queen Jack of Clubs and that's the key thing because you know that the Ten of Clubs is going to end up as a threat against them if the hearts are 4-2 there isn't a problem but when they're 5-1 it's going to be with North and you can set up the double squeeze people think double squeezes are really hard and sometimes spotting them can be harder than this this is a fairly easy one okay guys uh, have a sit back down Roger okay try this one Try and keep the undoes to a minimum because that seems to be causing a problem tonight. Looks like a weak jump over call to me, Roger. Three clubs, Sanya. You got two bullets, singleton heart. 
worth a three club bid any time. Uh huh. No, she was asking for help. Oh, did you hear that, Sanya? I think she probably did, but uh Well this is looking right on the money so far. Okay, so what's three spades? Three spades is an asking bid in spades, Alpha. She's she said I should just let you sink or swim, Sanya. That I should be mercilessly I just <laughs> Probably. Okay, so we had an asking bid of three spades, which was alpha in spades. And a double from west. I'm not quite sure what the double was supposed to be. So now D1, P2, Sanya. So redouble, or rather... R1 P2 so redouble is no support and 0 to 3 controls pass would be no support and 4 plus controls three, 3 no trumps would indeed be support with 0 to 3 controls and as Sanya has rightly determined, four clubs is showing spade support and four or more controls. So the double has gained us two levels of bidding here. So four diamonds is relay beta. But now we're using the strong beta scale. This is very impressive, guys. Okay, so North either has one of the missing aces and the other two kings, or they've got the two minor suit aces. How can we determine? Uh, So it is. I do apologise. You're absolutely right, Nuri. Four diamonds would indeed be Sigma. Because we're more than two bids away from spades. Um, sorry, Michael. You're going to have to undo four diamonds. Because four hearts is four hearts is relay beta. Good point, Nuri. Go to the top of the class. Four diamonds is sigma because. Four clubs is more than two bids away from four spades and because of the interference. So now four diamonds is sigma and four relay beta gets bumped to four hearts. Okay, so again, 
<laughs> okay, so R one P two again, uh, Sanya. So four, no. R one P two. That's okay. Thank you for these doubles, Roger. It's very considerate of you. At this rate, uh, north south are going to reach about 16 uh, spades on this hand. Okay, so the redouble here is the one step response showing exactly four controls. I'm not sure about the double of three spades. I think three spades redoubled vulnerable making four over tricks might be quite impressive. Okay, so now we have Okay. So five diamonds is epsilon in diamonds. No, I wouldn't. Sonia, you can't double partner's five diamond bid. Can you? So we, we don't have any space saving measures here. Okay. So six diamonds is either a void in diamonds or it's exactly ace x x. Okay. Are we going to get a lead here at some point, do you think? Roger? Okay. Anybody got any comments about the bidding or questions here? Well, okay, if, uh, if nobody else does, I've got one comment, which is about the, uh, the five diamond bid. The bidding was perfect up to that point. Can anybody see or tell me why five diamonds is actually probably not the right epsilon to ask?
Anybody going to volunteer that? Well, no, you haven't necessarily, uh, Sanya. Um, you might have three to the queen in spades from South's point of view. He doesn't know you've got four spades. He knows you've got five clubs. Okay, the issue is this. South should be trying to figure out exactly what controls North has. But we haven't got a lot of space here. Um, well, no, it, 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 it won't be. But I, the point is this. Five diamonds doesn't end up telling south whether north has the two missing aces or one of the aces and the two missing kings. However, if south made an epsilon in clubs, that would actually tell him exactly which controls north had. Because if South hasn't got, sorry, if North hasn't got the two minor suit aces, they will have the ace king of clubs. Or the king of clubs, at least. Okay? So an epsilon in clubs actually does, if, if, if South's got the king of clubs without the ace, then we know that he's got the ace of diamonds and the two missing kings. If South has the Ace of Clubs without the King, then they must have the two minor suit aces and we're missing a club, King and the Heart King. So I would prefer an Epsilon of five clubs to five diamonds because the answer to that will always um, tell you exactly what controls North has. And given that the opening lead is going to be coming up towards South's ace-queen and South's king-jack of diamonds, I actually think it's, it's possibly worth, once we find out that North has got the two missing aces, I would almost go for seven spades here. Because any 4-3 split in clubs is going to allow us um, to discard the losing diamond. Anyway, six spades is a perfectly good contract. Um, but do you see, uh, Michael, do you see what I meant about the f asking in clubs rather than diamonds, just on general principles? Okay. Righty ho. Time for one more, I think. And let me just pick a cracker. Um, it is almost, isn't it? Okay, let's try this one. So well done, North South. You did well. You don't. You don't have to interfere if it doesn't seem obvious. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> right, I tell you what, Michael, could we undo the five club bid because um, we we uh, it's a great bid, but bear in mind that if you're playing, uh, I'm not sure what Sanya, what defence 
Sanya thought you were playing to uh, one club. But she didn't mean what you thought she meant. And right now she might she might be regretting bidding two clubs. Actually, if you don't mind, could we undo the two club bid, Sanya? Well, two arts is a positive in hearts. Okay. Um no, I. Okay. Can somebody accept Rogers' undo? I think just stay silent, Sanya. I, I applaud your aggression here. Um, but A, two clubs doesn't mean what you think it means. If you're playing Crow Panama, then uh, two clubs is just showing clubs. much more likely. Okay, so this is just unusual. Okay, so as I said earlier, if there's interference over a positive response to uh, one no Trump, uh, to one club rather, uh, and Responder has shown a positive in a suit. Passes asking in hearts here. Well done. So double double here would be no top honor. Pass would be five card hearts with one top honor. How do you mean, Esther? Oh, no, you can't pass. You're quite right. Sorry. Um, right, so double... Sorry, I'm half asleep. Like Sanya, I've had a long day. Um, so, yeah, three clubs would be uh, five card with one top honour. And uh, three diamonds is five card hearts with two top honours. So now three hearts would be a repeat gamma, which is obviously not necessary. Uh, what's three no trumps, Roger? No, what? What happened to uh, three spades, Roger? No, this can't be to play. Not when we've had a strong agreement of hearts. Um, right, but Sonia, it's not beta. Three spades is relay beta. Three hearts would be a repeat gamma, which obviously we don't need.
Oh, I love these cheap doubles. Okay, so R1P2 applies here. We've had interference over an asking bid, three spades being relay beta. So redouble is naught to two controls, pass is three controls. So three no trumps with four controls and four clubs is five controls. Yeehaw. So Roger has two kings, so it's impossible for East to have three of them. Therefore, East must have the two red aces and one of the black kings. Ah, uh, she is persistent. Just out of interest, Roger, why five spades? South bid an unusual two no trumps. Is it conceivable that East has a singleton spade? When South has a big minor two suitor. A North. No, but they would have bid uh, something other than five diamonds. They would have bid five hearts if they had king, queen, xx. Five diamonds just shows second round control. Not second and third. Five hearts would have shown second and third round control. No problem.
Ooh, now that's interesting. Hang on, one, two, three. Okay. Um, S uh, oh, it's Roger again. Uh, just bear me a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Six no trumps, quite an interesting contract actually. Do you want to try and make it, Roger? <laughs> well, listen, guys, it's late. It's quarter past twelve, actually. It is past the witching hour. Um, uh, six hearts is trivial, as long as you take notice of all the doubles of spades. Okay, um, six no chumps is quite an interesting contract, actually. Um, I think as long as you duck the opening lead to rectify the count, I think you can make six no trumps. I think if South, if West wins the first club trick, I think they are possibly knackered. But we'll leave that for another time. Um, yeah, just just claim twelve tricks. I think on the assumption. that North has the spades, given the two no trump bid from South, and the double of the three spade bid, which suggests that North has spades, um, we can be fairly confident in taking the spade finesse against North, it probably is. So, in six hearts, we can do that, rough a spade, and that gives us four spades, five hearts, the ace of king of diamonds, and the ace of clubs, which is 12 tricks. In six no trumps, though, I think West needs to duck the opening lead. And now I think we have a double squeeze for the 12th trick. With uh, potentially clubs and diamonds against south. And the fourth spade and diamonds against north. Anyway, you can play with that to your heart's content in uh, Roger's excellent AA Bridge program. There may be another way of making 12 tricks if South wins the opening lead, if West wins the opening lead, but I can't see it off the top of my head. Anyway, well done, guys. Uh, we will finish there for the night, I believe.